Yes guys, I'm back here in Dorset and you know what that means? It is at long last time for the Bournemouth Half Marathon 2023. We are now only one day away from the race itself. Oh boy, it's all led up to this moment and we're here. So, I'm feeling good at the moment. Did a park run this morning. Oh, Dad, why are we, why are we doing park run still today? Because it's park run. Uh, any other reason? <laughs> I actually know you probably don't need any more reasons than that really but um yeah i made the last minute decision to just come along have a bit of fun um just really using it as a shakeout run today not gonna go hard in the slightest at all here we go well done. <laughs> see how all that happened and now it's just resting and get myself as fully prepared as I can be for the race itself. Now, let's meet the green team. <laughs> State your name. Stephen. What's your target? 225. And how are you feeling? Nervous. Good to hear. State your name. Jonathan. What's your target? It's up two hours. And how are you feeling? Just looking forward to the meal after. Gonna have some demolish it. State your name. No. There we are. There we are. You hear that Bournemouth half marathon? We're coming for you. And you're goddamn right we were coming for Bournemouth. We made extra sure we were well prepared to take on this mighty half by... Uh, uh, having an ice cream. Yep, with a weekend away, the holiday diet kind of made a bit of a return, but it had little time to clog up my digestive system as the countdown clock to race day was ticking. I was feeling confident. Like, really, almost unnaturally confident. But, I mean, you can already tell that, given I even went as far as to make a short edit in the last video, acting as if I'd changed my channel name from one satisfied runner to one single runner. This dangerous level of confidence meant that if I wanted to live up to my own words, I would need to perform one hell of a race. I practically cornered myself to do so, and make sure that I wasn't just treading water too deep, biting off more than I could chew, or just making myself look like a complete after all, I have put six weeks into this, around 500 kilometres, six episodes building up to it right here on YouTube, and so, so much waffle, I probably made Donkey hate them. And so, to make it all worth it, I need to perform. I mean, what else do you want from me? I want a new bike. Go to Halfords. And so, for the final time as an individual with a half marathon PB slower than one hour and 20 minutes, I went to sleep. Nah, just joking. I actually slept all right for once. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good start to the day. And uh, yes, it is at long last race day itself. Oh boy, <laughs> the nerves are starting to kick in a little bit now. Got a few butterflies and all, but excited beyond ever really. So yeah, I guess we should get all my things together and let's get this one started. <laughs> Before setting off on this dire quest, I made sure I was well nourished. We've got about two hours now before the start of the race, so I'm going to be leaving in just a sec. But before I do, got to make sure that I have my good luck pre hard effort event type run banana, or as I'm just going to call it from now on, the, the Gullafitrum. And now packing my things ready as the sun rose on one hell of a beautiful morning, I was joined by my dad. Well, dad, you got a nice easy number to remember there? and later my brother as we departed base and stepped towards the battleground. You see, we've got the whole team together now. How are you, how are you both feeling? <laughs> Still not this. Yeah. That, that hasn't really changed then. No. Just on our way down to the start now. The closer we got, the more runners we saw. It may have only been two weeks since my last race, but the sight of hundreds, or in this case thousands, of jovial runners gathering truly never gets old, especially on a day like this. So the weather has decided to be on our side for the most part here today. It is dead still. There is pretty much no wind whatsoever, so that is a blessing. Only issue is, it is a little bit on the warm side. And at the time of the race starting, we still got over an hour. It's 
a little bit of a late start today. It's at 11. So by the time we get to the race starting, it may be at about 20 degrees or so. So it might be a hot one, but at least it's not hurricane or anything. So we should be all right. Despite the heat amplified by the later start time, my confidence levels remained at bird height as I calmly jogged my way through a nice two kilometer warm up. Feeling pretty good. During which I not only met some other runners in the electric orange jog on kit, but also a fan of my own channel, something I still find truly unbelievable as someone with less subscribers than there are episodes of the Big Bang Theory. So Jonathan, the big day is here, your first ever half marathon. How are you feeling? Excited, yeah. I think, I think I'll do all right. I feel rested, so. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Looking forward to running with your, your colleagues and supporting the great cause? Definitely, yeah. I don't know how, how much we'll be together. I haven't seen any of them yet. Um, I don't know when they'll be getting here, but um, yeah, we'll have to, have to see when everyone arrives. Might end up crossing the line altogether, might end up miles apart. I know I'll be miles away from you, so that'll be <laughs> well, a shame, but you know. Well, I hope it all goes well and uh, wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Hydrated, number equipped, dynamically stretched, and super sh shooed, you can now tell that I'm ready. So, just dropped my bag off. This I've had a, zero a last quick drink. I'm gonna do Please my last few warm-ups now. The team is here, we're all ready. Let's get this one underway. Let's do it. As my brother met up with his colleagues and my dad warmed up in his start pen, the green team had for now separated as I stood on the start line itself, surrounded by many new faces alongside some familiar ones. I had a great chat with those who were to become the eventual male and female winners before the start, as well as a new face, but wearing a familiar kit a Hayward Heath Harrier by the name of Harvey. Great guy. Using my final moments of pre-race build-up chatting away, the crowds were soon silenced near enough by ominous suspense music, reminding me of what was a stake. Which in actuality was very little, but to me, it meant a lot. Six weeks of waffle on YouTube has led to this. <laughs> and I was finally here, ready to take on my second ever half marathon and at long last, break 80. giant swarm of runners were at last let out of the cage and onto the roads for their 13.1 mile adventure along the coast and after quickly avoiding being boxed in I settled into my stride. I had a feeling the first kilometre would be a bit overly enthusiastic and I was proved right with a 3.31 to open this race. As strong and adrenaline fueled as I felt, I knew it was. A bit fast. Yeah, if it sounds like I'm trying to vlog. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Still got the camera on. Yeah. Admittedly, it was a little challenging trying to switch the camera on and off throughout the race while still maintaining that smooth rhythm. As the front runners soared off into the distance, I settled into around my target pace, sticking with Harvey as we ran alongside the leading woman, Welsh international athlete Olivia Sim. I hope I said that right. Together, the three of us kept the pace smooth and on target for 77 minutes. Staying close to the leading woman really helped to get the full energy from the crowds as we dashed past. Granted, those cheers were never for me, but it all just added that extra flavour to the adrenaline, like adding salt to the chips. Approaching the first U-turn, it was 40-mile world record holder and 222 marathoner Ollie Garrett leading with Salisbury AC runner Jamie Don... Yeah, damn it, I can't say that name either. With Salisbury AC runner Jamie Dominey right on his shoulder. Among the chasers was also Chichester legend James Baker going strong as always. But after making the first U-turn myself, we hit our first five-kilometer split in... About 18.10. Nearly spot on pace. Within my bag sat my water bottle, currently on its own journey to the finish line in the back of a lorry, bag trafficking I suppose, but it had meant that my mouth was now craving some water. Ah oh, perfect, a water stop. I may have only taken one small sip, but as if it were a MacGuffin in a cliche movie, it granted me many powers, and with support from a nice gentle downhill return east, I put my foot on the throttle, climbed out of the trenches, and stepped into no man's land. While 
only one runner from Dartford Harriers sat in sight on my side of the road, though currently very far away. Just metres to my left passed by the masses in their thousands, many of whom cheered me on by name thanks to its appearance on all our race numbers. A superb addition, adding even more salt to those chips. I passed by brother Jonathan, right as this man tried- What the dog doing? Feeling as smooth as a, 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 a an M&M. &M. The pace had indeed began to surge to sub-75 pace as I closed in on the Dartford Harrier. Thank you! I was fully aware that the next runner was completely out of sight, but feeling strong enough to hold my current pace and feeling a bit like one of our golden trio whenever one of them breaks down, I gunned it and, and left him behind. behind. If I was in no man's land beforehand, I was now so far into no man's land that there practically wasn't even anyone on the other side of the trenches. I mean, look at this, you wouldn't even think I was in a race, just a casual run along the seaside. The baking hot day meant left, right and centre citizens had flocked to the beach, which did help provide further support as those just having a day out took a moment to cheer me on. Oh, oh and I forgot to mention, sand. 10k threw in around 36 flat and soon passing through halfway I eased back slightly on the pace for I had some mental processing to do with regards to a looming threat that had glued itself to my mind since way before the race began. An enemy that makes almost all runners quaver in fear, a dark lord of the running world. Hill. I knew it was coming as Boscombe Pierce slowly grew larger in my sights but I still feared what damage it may do and approaching 8 miles we finally hit it. All right, Hill. You're going down! <laughs> oh, wait. This isn't actually that bad. I honestly feel all right holding the pace here. I mean, sure, it's not ideal for speed, but I can make do with this. This is going well. Perhaps all that fear of hills post a particular race there isn't a video for was just me being a big old sausage, because I'm doing just fine. Hey, what's around this corner? Uh-oh. Oh, I get it now. Yeah, this is horrible. Who put this hill here? <laughs> um, legs? Are you there? Legs? <gasps> At last, we had reached the summit, if you can call it that, but the ship wasn't damage free. Thankfully, didn't need another poop deck, if you know what I mean, but the legs were now roasting. A small out and back section meant I got an idea of just how far ahead the next runner was, who also appeared to have been stranded on the moon with me and my camera stopped filming. Oh. And I couldn't restart it for some reason. But... Uh, fine. Coming out, you. Yahoo! As I chugged along trying to settle back into the now a bit more challenging to maintain target pace, I distinctly remember a spectator calling out, It's just downhill from here. Which he happened to say right as I hit another small incline. Fake news with Mr. Spectator. New episodes coming in, who cares time. But here's the thing. At surface level, he was right. A large steep downhill section towards Bournemouth Pier saw the crowds at their wildest and led me through to a 3.22 16th kilometre. You know I love parkrun, so you know exactly what was going through my head. Just one more to go. I got this one in the bag. 5k is practically a sprint for me now and we carry the downhill momentum with us. Look at me, I'm even posing for the photographer. Uh, okay, it looks a bit more like I'm surrendering, but nah, nothing can stop us now. Let's go, 4.9k left. This is great. 4.8 kilometres to go. Four point seven. Oh, okay, I think you get me. The sun was sure putting up a fight against me as things started getting painful and the downhill momentum evaporated. Also, sand. Again. <coughs> oh, bloody hell, it's hot. How much further to go? Oh, good. 4.6 kilometers. Finally, finally turning back around Boscombe Pier, the finish area was in sight. Only a couple kilometres away. And at last, the runner ahead was within range as the gap very slowly began to close. Did I have enough in me to take him or was the gap too big? I was hot, sweaty and fatigued. Uh, also, sand. Sand, sand, so much sand! But the gap was closing. Bournemouth Pier slowly grew closer one last time and I gave what I could to surge and kick past the runner ahead, despite all legal objections from my chest which had now switched into agony mode. 
but against all odds, and after over 10 kilometers of solo running, I finally caught him. Sharp turns onto the pier and leading into the finish meant a sprint was hard to unleash, and that's ignoring the deep fried legs and chest wanting to escape my body. But as I looked at the clock, I knew a sub 76 might, just might be on the table, but it was going to be close, and that sprint finish just refused to emerge as I nearly threw up at the far end of the pier with 400 metres to go. But I kept on pushing, and at last, with the finishing sight and the weight of months of build up, six weeks of training, and 21 kilometres behind me, I let it out. And after nearly eight months, well, I did it. I'd finally completed my second half marathon. Uh, officially speaking, that is. And I did it in one hour, 15 minutes and 56 seconds. Ah. <sighs> Thank Christ I had not shot myself in the foot with that one. I said I would annihilate 80, and depending on your definition of annihilate, I think I did all right. <laughs> Already drank the water they gave me, but got protein bar as well. Stuff. As with nearly every race, there's always going to be those little things that I wish I could have done better, but as far as memorable for the right reason goes, this race was definitely one of them. Oh, hello. Oh, hello there. He's finished. He's done it. His first half marathon. How do you find it, Jonathan? No. So, no. you hit that two hour target? Yeah, I think so. I haven't had the text yet, but it's driver says so. So, very good. Will you do another one? Probably. Yeah. Like to hear. I was not alone in the Target Annihilation Club that day. Brother Jonathan ended up running 155.48, over four minutes inside his two-hour target. For a debut half marathon, he should be pretty proud. I know someone else who would be. So I've been quite a while since finished now, got the t-shirt on and everything, had a bit of lunch, had a very nice chicken and trip, so pasty, which was very good. And uh, look who else has finished here. So, Dad, how did you find it today? That was hot. Hot stuff. Yeah, yeah, very. And finally, while the PB had evaded Dad that day, for the roasting hot temperatures, his 2.41 was still a time that put a smile on his face. What a day. I mean, seriously, what a day. There's just something about those longer events that hit differently once you complete them. Yeah, it's probably just the legs falling asleep immediately afterwards, but still, truly, this was a special day for me that I'll never forget. And I think I can safely say that my race was the global highlight of the running world for October the 8th, 2023. I mean, nothing else really happened on that day now, did it? Oh! And well, that was breaking 80. To the surprise of no one at all, I did indeed break 80. And I'm pretty chuffed with my new PB. Of course, I only intend to keep it until next February as I have indeed already re-entered the Brighton Half Marathon in which I'll be taking on that 75 minute barrier. But for now, well, this is it. 75.56. I'm pretty happy with that. I do really hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was worth the very long wait. Of course, you already know what I would say next at this point. <coughs> until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Unsatisfied Runner and thank you very much for watching.